Good morning. A ballistic pendulum is a classic tool for calculating the speed of a projectile. The ballistic pendulum is a block suspended from strings at which you fire the projectile. In my demonstration, I use a blow dart gun to fire a blow dart at the hanging block of wood. The blow dart collides with the wood block and embeds itself in the wood block. That is a perfectly inelastic collision. Yes, Billy. This is a perfectly inelastic collision. The wood block and blow dart swing together up to a maximum height, and that maximum height can be used to calculate the velocity of the dart before the collision. Of course, this happens pretty quickly, so this is what it looks like at 40 times slower than real speed. We can just measure the speed of the dart using the slow motion video, right? So we don't really need ballistic pendulums anymore. Yeah, Bo, that may be true. However, this still serves as a great physics problem. Bo, please read and translate the problem. Flippin' physics. The dart moving horizontally at a constant speed embeds itself in a hanging stationary wood block. The wood block and dart rise to a maximum vertical height. Solve for the speed of the dart before the collision in terms of the mass of the dart, the mass of the wood block, the maximum vertical height of the dart and wood block, and known constants. This is called a ballistic pendulum. Okay, let's label some variables. The mass of the blow dart is m sub d for dart. The mass of the wood block is m sub... Let's, let's not use b, that's too similar to d for dart. So let's use m sub w for wood block. The initial velocity of the wood block is zero. The maximum vertical height of the dart and wood block is... Let's use H final for that. And we are solving for the initial velocity of the dart, so V sub di equals question mark. Thank you, Bo. Bobby, please identify the different events in this problem and the general physics principles during those events. Identify the different events in this problem and the general physics principles during those events? What does that mean? What things happen in this problem and what physics will we use to solve the problem? Okay. Uh, there is a collision. Right. And then what happens? It swings on the strings. And what is that called? A pendulum. Okay. So there is a collision and a pendulum, right? Yeah. So those are the two events. What general physics principles are we going to use to analyze those events? Okay, I, I, I think I get it. Um, first, there is a collision. During that collision, all the forces in the X direction are internal to the system. The force the dart applies to the wood block is equal and opposite to the force the wood block applies to the dart. Those two forces form a Newton's third law force pair. Therefore, the net force in the X direction equals zero. And because net force equals the derivative of momentum with respect to time, the momentum of the dart and wood block system does not change. In other words, during the collision, linear momentum in the X direction is conserved. So one event is the collision where the general physics principle is conservation of linear momentum in the X direction. Actually, we could just say that in the X direction, net force equals the change in momentum over change in time, which equals zero, and also get to conservation of linear momentum in the X direction that way, and therefore we do not actually need derivatives to understand this, right, Mr. P? Yes, Billy, that is correct. Bobby, please continue. Sure. The other event is where the two objects swing up on the strings as a pendulum, and there is no work done by a force of friction or work done by a force applied on the system. Therefore, mechanical energy is conserved. So after the collision, the next event is a pendulum where mechanical energy is conserved. Absolutely, Bobby. Thanks. Now, rather than looking at this as initial and final and parts one and two, I am instead going to have us identify three different moments during this event, and then identify what happens from moment one to moment two, and then from moment two to moment three. 
Moment one is right before the collision. Moment two is right after the collision. And moment three is when the dart and woodblock are at their maximum height. We can now say that from moment one to moment two, linear momentum in the x direction is conserved. And from moment two to moment three, mechanical energy is conserved. This does mean we need to give some of our known values different subscripts, which will actually clarify exactly where these initial and final points are. Velocity of the woodblock initial is now velocity of the woodblock at moment one. Height final is now height at moment three. And velocity of the dart initial is now velocity of the dart at moment one. Billy, please analyze the collision to solve for the velocity of the dart at moment one. Certainly. Well, Bobby already showed us that linear momentum in the x direction is conserved from 1 to 2 during the collision, and momentum equals mass times velocity, so the mass of the dart times the velocity of the dart at 1 plus the mass of the wood block times the velocity of the wood block at 1 equals the mass of the dart times the velocity of the dart at 2 plus the mass of the wood block times the velocity of the wood block at 2. The velocity of the wood block at 1 is 0, so that term cancels out. The dart and wood block are stuck together at 2, so those two velocities are equal to one another, and we can factor out velocity at 2. And we can solve for the velocity of the dart at 1. It equals the quantity mass of the dart plus the mass of the wood block, all divided by the mass of the dart, all multiplied by the velocity of both the dart and the wood block at 2. But we do not know the velocity at 2, so... Oh, <laughs> we put that in our equation holster. Yeah, and that equation goes in our equation holster. Very nice, Billy. Yes, we can now put that equation into our equation holster, and we know we need to solve for the velocity at 2 in terms of the known variables. Bo, please do that. Sure. From moment 2 to moment 3... Bobby already explained that mechanical energy is conserved. Let's set the horizontal zero line at the center of mass of the dart and wood block at moment two. At moment two, the only type of mechanical energy is kinetic energy. At moment three, the only type of mechanical energy is gravitational potential energy. And everybody brought mass to the party. Hold up. Which mass is that? The, the mass of the dart or the mass of the wood block? They, they have to be the same mass in order to have a mass party. Um, both masses are the total mass of the dart and the wood block. So the two masses are the same. And we can say, everybody, everybody brought total mass to the party. Everybody brought mass. Now we can rearrange the equation to solve for velocity at 2 and substitute that back into the equation we previously holstered to get the velocity of the dart at 1 equals the quantity mass of the dart plus the mass of the wood block all divided by the mass of the dart all multiplied by the square root of 2 times acceleration due to gravity times height at 3. Thank you, Bo. Now... I know this answer is a bunch of variables, which for many of you is less satisfying than ending with a number. We will substitute in real numbers to this equation to check its veracity in a bit. However, first, let's see if this solution for the velocity of the dart at moment one makes sense. More specifically, Bobby, according to our equation, if we increase the velocity of the dart at moment one, keeping all other variables constant, what happens to height Three. Okay, so the mass of the dart and wood block are unchanged, and the acceleration due to gravity is also unchanged. However, we have increased the velocity of the dart before the collision, and the question is, what happens to the height of the dart and wood block at the end? Well, according to our equation, height 3 increases. I agree, Bobby, but does that make sense? Yes. I I'm sorry. What I mean is use physics to explain if that makes sense. Okay. 
Well, if the velocity of the dart at moment one is increased, that increases the momentum of the system at one. According to conservation momentum, that increases the momentum at two. That means the velocity at two is increased, and therefore kinetic energy at two is increased. And according to conservation of energy, gravitational potential energy at three is increased. That means the height at three must be increased. So yes, increasing the velocity of the dart at one should increase the height at three. Thanks, Bobby. Billy, if the velocity of the dart at one is again increased, however, we want the height at three to be the same as before. And if the only variable we change is the mass of the wood block, how would we have to change the mass of the wood block to make that happen? Please look at it in terms of the equation and also explain if the physics makes sense. Okay, the velocity of the dart at one is increased. Everything but the mass of the wood block remains the same. According to our equation, the mass of the wood block would have to be increased. But does that make sense with respect to physics? Well, again, increasing the velocity of the dart at one increases the momentum of the dart and wood block system at one, which according to conservation of momentum, increases the momentum of the system at two. However, according to conservation of energy, in order for the height at three to remain the same, we need the velocity at two to also remain the same. In order for that to occur, we, we need the mass of the wood block to be increased to make the momentum at two larger. And so yes, this makes sense according to the physics as well. I agree, Billy. Bo, same question, only for the mass of the dart. In other words, if the velocity of the dart at one is again increased, however, we want the height at three to be the same as before. If the only variable we change is the mass of the dart, how would we have to change the mass of the dart to make that happen? Please look at it in terms of the equation and also explain if the physics makes sense. All right, according to our equation, if we increase the velocity of the dart at one, in order for the height at three to stay the same, the mass of the dart needs to be decreased. Hold up, really? How can you tell from the equation? Uh, uh, when estimating this, because the mass of the dart is so small relative to the mass of the wood block, we can consider the change in the total mass of the dart and wood block to be negligible. And because the mass of the dart is in the denominator and we need the value of the equation to increase, we need to decrease the mass of the dart, again, because it is in the denominator. Okay, thanks. You're welcome. Okay, but does this make sense according to physics? Well, again, increasing the velocity of the dart at one would increase the momentum at one. However, we need the momentum at one to remain constant. So we need to decrease the mass of the dart to keep the momentum at one constant. So yeah, the physics makes sense as well. Cool. Very nice. All right. I think it is time to actually put some numbers in this. In my demonstration, the mass of the dart is 0.0051 kilograms. The mass of the wood block is 0.1329 kilograms. And the maximum vertical height above the horizontal zero line, which is height three of the center of mass of the dart and wood block system, is 0.056 meters. Plugging all those numbers into our equation gives us 28.363 or 28 meters per second with two sig figs for the velocity of the dart at moment one or while it is moving at a constant velocity before colliding with the wood block. And we can measure the velocity of the dart before the collision using this high frame rate video, right, Mr. P? Exactly, Bo. The dart moves a horizontal distance of 0.297 meters in 10 frames right before it collides with the wood block. Considering the frame rate of this video is 960 frames per second, we can multiply 10 frames by one second over 960 frames to get a change in time of 0.010416 repeating seconds. Therefore, we measured the constant velocity of the dart before the collision to be 28.512 meters per second. Considering relative error equals the observed value minus the accepted value, all divided by the accepted value and then multiplied by 100, and using the measured velocity as the observed value and the calculated velocity as the accepted value, 
we get a relative error between the measured and predicted velocities of the dart before the collision to be 0.53% with two sig figs. I think that is definitely close enough to say, the physics works. The physics works, uh-huh, uh-huh. The physics works. The physics works, uh-huh, uh-huh. The physics works. Thank you very much for learning with me today. I enjoyed learning with you.